Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Halloween week. Oh my gosh, how are you doing out there? Are you crazy busy? Are you snowing? Are you cold? Is it warm? What is it like where you are? I'm so worried for all you florists that are busy, 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 because this year is going to be one of the hardest years ever. It truly is one of the most stressful that we've ever gone through. You have all the normal chaos of having it be on a Sunday. That's tough. And then you have the abnormal chaos of COVID. And now you've got the weather with some of the coldest temperatures on record and snow. Oh my gosh, it's dreadful. But today we're in the studio. It's warm and cozy in here. And it's very bright because of all the lights. So it feels great. I actually put on a Valentine dress. I felt kind of bare coming over with my scarf off because I was like, oh my gosh, it's too cold for that. But I thought, you know what's appropriate? for the Valentine holiday, to get a little snazzed up. Plus I knew with all the lights it'd be warm, be cozy, and that you'd be joining me. So I'd love to know where you are. Are you working? Am I in the background? Are you watching as you poke posies? If you're on your phone, remember turn it sideways for a bigger picture. If the comments are in the way, swipe. That'll put it in silent mode so that you can see the picture but you don't see the comments. If you want to them later, swipe the other direction and I'll put them right back there for you. If you're on a tablet or your desktop, you can go full screen, larger than life. If you're watching it on YouTube, you may have it on your larger than life TV coming at you surround sound. So many different ways. Today, we're going to be talking Valentine's and I have red because that's the color of love. But I also have yellow and orange and gray and green, pink, why? So many different things. We're going to have a ton of fun today. And I thought, let's think about things you've learned in flower school. So that was kind of my thoughts again. So same as last week, how do we incorporate what you've learned in flower school on a daily basis that you might be doing? Well, I mean not daily, but for Valentine's. And I thought about the weaving nest that we make in the advanced class. And this is one that teacher Michelle did and was just sitting here. I pulled the flowers out, threw them away because they were obviously long gone. But I thought, how lovely is that for Valentine with the red and such? Okay. So that's what I'm going to be working with while I get things ready. If you haven't already introduced yourself, do so. Let the tribe know where you're from. Let me know where you are watching. Let us know how the holiday is going. All those things. Type in. Add your tulip. Let us know and start the collaboration together so that you all get to know each other. We may have a person from northern, mm, is it Michigan or Minnesota, who is looking to connect with people. So if you're in northern Michigan or Minnesota and you mentioned that to us that you would like to connect, Make sure you put that in there. And then others of you that may be in that area, reach out to her, get to know her, and say, hey, I'd like to get to know you. You're part of my tribe. So I have the nest that was built for the advanced class. It has the yarns, it has curly willow, rustic wire, a bit of lily grass. And then I just grabbed a vessel off of our shelf. And I thought, rather than setting it down, I'm going to bring it up and put it on the vessel. But then I need to make sure that it's going to stay there. So I thought about just grabbing a piece of old willow that we had left over, and that would work. And it just goes in like that and supports the nest in place, ready for flowers. And then I thought, oh, I wonder. And I said, Teacher Marisa, do we have any pussy willow? I want some pussy willow. And guess what? She had pussy willow that she went and grabbed. And we thought, oh, that's what we need. And I thought, that's just perfect. And I love the fact 
but it's tall and then also down below. So for this, we're going to prune just a little bit so that I have two heights. I'm going to pull this one out and this one out and then leave this portion. Then I'm going to just very carefully feed it down through and keep pulling it so that I get that portion to go through to the bottom. There we go. And then back up and back in so that I get it to actually weave into my nest. Get all those little bits in there. There we go. And back here. So now I've got a starting point with the nest and the pussy willow. I could take another piece, weave that in, and it becomes the base of a hand tie bouquet. Now, as I was fussing, this little bit of lily grass came undone. I can just weave it back in there. And that's kind of fun just all by itself. What do you think? Do you like that? It speaks to me. I thought I had a lot of fun with that, with just that little tiny bit of pussy willow and then the woven nest. So thanks to teacher Michelle for making the perfect nest because it's Valentine colors, so it worked perfect for me. So while I gather some flowers, let's tell you who else is here. In the studio with me is teacher Marisa and from the creative team, Parker's with us today. No Carolyn, no teacher Michelle. They're all valentining. Teacher mm -hmm. Carolyn is working with Jerry Teacher Jerry, they're doing arrangements galore, so they're busy. So in the studio, Parker and Marisa, online virtually, we've got Susie, she'll be with you on YouTube, and Caledonia is with you all on Facebook. So now, Marisa, Parker, what have you guys got? Well, what's going on out there? Well, I pull some flowers. Well, over here on Facebook, um, they're all still coming in, but let's see, um, we have quite a bit of tulip Tribers out there, we have Beatrice and Donna, and we have Renee, who ha who is a new Tulip Tribe member. Hi, Renee. And she's eating her toast and jam while watching <laughs> us today. Oh, you make me hungry. <laughs> and we have Scott, Sharon, Andrea, Denise, Roxy, who says you look great. And Thanks, Bega, Roxy. And Bega in Iceland, uh, it's snowing there, and just got her roses in today. Oh, Bega, I bet you're going to be crazy busy. Oh, my goodness. And we have Gayla and Wendy and Kathleen, who is walking on the treadmill. <laughs> oh, so you're being healthy at the same time that you're having flower inspiration. Grand. And, I love it. Uh, I, I would like to comment to you, Leanne, that Anna loves your dress and your nails. Oh, no, can you believe it? I did this for you guys today. I never, ever polish my nails. But I thought, it's Valentine's. I needed to get ready for you. So I wore my Valentine dress, and I did Valentine nails just for you. Probably won't see that again real soon because it feels weird. I keep looking at myself going, whoa, whose fingers are those? It took me a while to get used to that. And then also, um, so Laughing Earth Flower, who just chimed in and said her name, uh, Elizabeth. She is actually, she said she's processing like a million poppies for Valentine's Day. Oh, you know, that's the thing. There's so many flowers to get ready for this holiday. It's just overwhelming. Everybody, oh, go for it. Sorry. Everybody on uh, YouTube is talking about the weather and where they're from and everything. There's people from... We have New York all the way to Washington, and then there's people from Barbados and Puerto Rico and Australia all checking in. Uh, from Belgium and Malaysia as well, we have like high of 20 degrees up to 80 degrees and sunny going on. Oh my God. Jealous of that. The international group there on YouTube, and what a diversity of weather that is. When you come in from so many different countries, you know that it is going to be a variation on that weather brought in the deeper shade of that purpley red with the callas, and then tucking in the red red of the carnations, so that I'm picking up some of the vibe of traditional Valentine, but updating it with contemporary Valentine, and creating layers 
within the arrangement. I'm just kind of playing here for a minute, seeing what else I'm going to stick in. Now, if you've got a question or a comment, type it in. We'll try to get everything answered. It's always fun to get to talking with your tribe and you on the tribe. If you've got an answer for somebody that types something in, add it because we all learn from each other. I have a question. Um, I actually just got a phone call in regards to lilies um, and maybe you have an answer to this, but someone does have a question about lilies and what is the best way to store lilies for val to, get, to get them ready for Valentine's Day? That's a great question. So the question, if you couldn't hear, because of course we're all masked up, except for me, I get to be mask free <laughs> since I'm on camera, but everybody else is masked to keep us all safe. But um, the question was, how best to take care of lilies for Valentine's Day? And lilies will last the longest if you just leave them alone, dry pack, and they aren't open, they're just sitting there. Then, when you're ready for them, which depends on which variety and such, about a week out, so like right now, get them out, put them in water, put them with flower food, let them have light, and they'll start to open and be beautiful so that they're perfect for Valentine's. So I find that um, when I first get them and I want them to stay in buds, just leave them alone. Then when I'm ready for them to start opening, open them out, give them space so that you don't damage any of the petals and let them drink and open. And then once they're fully rehydrated and ready to go into your arrangement, then design away and you should be good. And the question that I actually got um, today over the phone, Leanne, they said that the um, lilies, the very, very tips of them started to turn brown when they started opening. Oh, and I had no. suggested that possibly maybe uh, when they were packed to them, shipped, maybe the tips were pushed up against the box. It could be box damage, that is one, and it could also be cold damage, which is another one of those huge stressors right now. So the tips of the lilies were turning brown as they started to open. And if they do run into the top of the box, that can turn them brown and crunch them up and damage them because they're bruised. If they get too cold in transportation in that box, they can start turning brown. If they get totally frozen, they'll get mushy as well. So um, kind of a problem there. So that could be um, a temperature issue. I know many people that are getting their flowers in are finding that the quality is not coming in as wonderful as it has at some years, simply because the farms aren't able to keep up because COVID, they didn't have all their workers there for a period of time at the last spring. And yes, it's a year ago, but we're still suffering the ramifications of this last year. And so flowers are at a premium because there's not enough sometimes to go around. And then the weather and transportation is working against this. So lots of little issues there. So you can see I've added in roses now with the callas, the pussy willow, finishing it all off. Then I just have to think, what do I want to add? And I think to increase my unity and to really tie it all together, I want to bring a little bit of that deep color of the callas over to this side just to draw your eye through, but I'm going to keep them tucked low. I don't want them to come leggy like on that side, but by drawing your eye through from one side to the other, it enhances the unity, increases the rhythm, and adds line to the arrangement. So it just kind of finishes it through. That look better to you? What do you think? I think it really enhanced that. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of foliage here. Leanne, and actually Karen is uh, the person that called today asking about the lilies, and she's on Facebook with us, so. Hi, Karen. Hopefully you got all your questions answered. I'm so sorry to hear that your lilies aren't perfect. That just breaks your heart because you work so hard to get the very best product for your customers 
And then sometimes Mother Nature and shipping and reality gets in the way and it's like, oh, it just is horrible. Well, Leanne, you know, she could just do what Rick's doing because he decided that all his customers are just going to get cheesecake instead of flowers. <laughs> uh, no, 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 Rick, that's not allowed. One must have flowers. Even I will make sure that I have flowers at my house for Valentine's Day because how could you not have flowers? Oh, now, don't think I'll have red roses. That doesn't make me very happy. I'll oh. take them. Oh, you'll take the red roses? I love it. They're my favorite flower. Are they really? Yeah. The red ones. The red ones. They have to be red. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Parker, do you have a favorite flower? Hmm. I really like, I was going to say, I like peonies a lot. That's my wife's favorite. Peonies are a fave, and if they're your wife's favorite, there's that little tiny window when they're um, available, basically around Mother's Day, a little before and a little after. And they are available year-round, but that's when they're in season here in the Northern Hemisphere. And then that's when you better make sure you get her some then, if that's her favorite. You can't let that go. Leanne, uh, uh, Charisse has a question for the tribe. They want to know how many florists out there reflex their roses. Ah, good question. So, for the tribe, when you do your roses, and let's be specific, when you do your roses for Valentine's, do you reflex the petals? Good question. Be curious to see the answers on that. So now I just cut that down and set it into the vase. By doing the red to the red, I have unity to the container. By adding the nest, it's a keepsake that the person will have left over after Valentine's Day. So it makes it a gift with a gift, and it makes it kind of fun. And the flowers have a great water source because they're right in a vase, so you don't have to worry about that. It's foam-free, so you're being eco-conscious. All those things that makes for a fun Valentine arrangement. What do you think? Do you like that one? If you like it, give us a Valentine heart. And you know what? If you're part of the Tulip Tribe, let's go heart, tulip, heart. Because isn't that kind of fun? That's just the way we do it. Heart, tulip, heart for Valentines. Um, and I'll go ahead and grab another arrangement ready. While you guys are talking amongst yourselves, what should we be making next? Let's see here. Shout out to Jillian, who's currently working on her round arrangements on basic floral design. Ah, okay. So, Jillian, are you doing round round or oval round? Because you can do it either way, elongated, two-sided to create the oval, or you can do totally round and do it that way. So, which way are you doing it? You know, you students have been so busy. You've been keeping us on our toes because we've had a lot of submissions. Um, and I've actually stepped in and started doing some evaluations this week, too, because there were so many. I wanted to make sure that everybody got them before Valentine's Day got too crazy. So we've been going back and forth and back and forth. So go ahead, pop them in. We'll all be here tomorrow still grading away, doing evaluations. Don't delay. Get those lessons in. And if you're valentining, we'll be here when you're done, and we'll go mm -hmm. ahead. Because we'll be valentining over the weekend, but then, of course, we'll be flowering with you most of the time. Well, shout out to Paula, who just started our online course last week, and she says she is loving it. Oh, good. Nice to get to know you, Paula. I'm glad you joined us. And for those of you thinking about joining us, don't forget the price change starts on March 1st. So if you want to lock in and get your studies started, which who doesn't want to go to flower school? Hello, that's the greatest place on earth. Go ahead and do it in February. Do it now so that you get your price locked in at this time. Um, anything that we receive before March 1st is in the old pricing, but March 1st, everything goes up. Guaranteed promise. Now, I know I had a couple of people that just enrolled in um, the basic floral design here in Portland that starts March 1st, and that's the last class that will be with the old pricing. After that, it goes up. So if you are looking to do in-person, 
I have, I believe, five spots left, counting what I just had come in. So five spots left. Um, and you can join us and design in person right here in Portland, Oregon, which is pretty grand. Now I've started grabbing some different colors here because you don't have to do just red. You saw I added that sort of purple, making it into an analogous, or I could go into the oranges, also an analogous, just going the opposite direction. See, I think I have a color wheel. Yes, I do. So analogous would be picking your red color, okay? And then you could move towards the blues and do analogous red to purple, like I did on the first one. Or you can move towards the yellows and do reds to oranges and analogous, which makes a wonderful, wonderful palette. So my outfit is more to the reds to the purples and to the pinker and the blue-based colors. These are going to go to the yellow based colors. You can see the difference when I hold it up. I mean, they're both kind of red, but when I put this here, it's definitely pink. You can really see that. Liam, shout out to Rhonda, who started our online basic course two days ago. Hi, Rhonda. And then also Rachel, who started on Monday, who cannot stop watching. Oh, Rachel, I think I did one of your, maybe it was your introduction. Hmm, it seems like I did something of yours, but maybe I'm just dreaming. I saw your name there and um, thought about it. I'm actually remiss because I normally do Welcome to Flower School to everybody on Facebook and Instagram, and I have a list of people that I haven't done that for yet. Bad Leanne, bad, bad. But I will get that done this weekend, if not tomorrow, but I will get you all with your Facebook and Instagram welcomes because that's important to let you know that we appreciate you and that we're thrilled you're with us. So, grand. And then I'd like to do a shout out to Ayana, who I believe I actually graded a couple of uh, her designs today, who also just started. Um, she's local here in Portland and is hoping to come to the advanced class here in the classroom. Wonderful. Nice to meet you. I hope you are ready for our maybe snow, because now that they're saying it could happen, it's like, oh my gosh, get ready. Now, in Oregon, if they say maybe snow, that could mean a half of an inch, or it could mean nothing, or it could be an inch, but we'll see. You know, it could be kind of fun. I just don't want it to be too much until after Valentine's Day because I don't want the poor florist trying to deliver in the snow. It's so hard, so hard. So what I'm doing here is a trio. One of my favorite ways to design is to do multiples because then you just say, well, how much do you love her? Do you want a trio so she can have one on the kitchen? one in the bathroom and one in the bedroom and know you love her everywhere. Oh, you love her just a little bit. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Maybe you love her a lot. I thought you could even do a six pack. Wouldn't that be fun? A six pack of flowers. I think that would be pretty fabulous and really finish out making it seem special. I think that would work. Leanne, let's see here. Um, I have a question about flower pop-ups. What is that and how do they work? Flower pop-ups are on trend. Um, and what you're doing is setting up a temporary location to sell flowers. And I did that for years that I would, every Valentine's Day especially and Mother's Day, would set up a pop-up. So I had a store but in addition to the store, I would just set up a little second location so that people could buy from me conveniently no matter where they were. And it made for really good buying ability because I could buy more and get a better price because I had two locations then. Uh, it was kind of fun because sometimes people would say, oh, I'm so glad you're here. You know, that florist over there is so expensive. I want to buy from you. And all I had to do was giggle because I was the florist over there. Uh, and so they were still buying from me. But if they thought they were getting a better deal, 
bless them. You know, that's just fine. And so it was always kind of fun because we say, oh, you're right. I am so glad you found us. We want to make sure we give you the best value. <gasps> oh, I don't know if they ever figured out that it was still us, but they bought flowers and that made me happy. Leanne, yeah, Cindy pointed out on YouTube that Friday is the Lunar New Year and red is the perfect color for the Chinese New Year. So true. Lunar New Year, um, ch the Chinese New Year, uh, the Lansu Chinese Garden is getting ready right now to have their whole New Year celebration and it's red everywhere and the lanterns are hung. So yes, it's a big, big, big time. In fact, I was trying to look at my schedule to figure out when I could go down because the garden is so beautiful. And if we did get snow, I just pray they stay open because that would be just magical to walk through the garden in the snow with the lights and the lanterns and everything. It just makes me want to cry almost. It sounds so perfect. So I've got to figure out how I can make that happen because yes, it is a big deal. So we've got Lots and lots going on, and lots and lots of flowers happening. What else is happening in your worlds out there? Got more things to say? Let me know. We have. I have some. Uh, let's see. Well, first of all, um, a few of our viewers out in Texas, Leanne, they're expecting snow in Austin and Houston. No way! Oh my gosh! You're not supposed to get snow on Valentine's. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we have someone wondering um, if customers typically, for Valentine's Day, do customers typically ask for bouquets or more table arrangements? You know, there can be both ways. It sort of depends on your location and your clientele. And this year is going to be different in that most people won't be delivering to an office. They'll be delivering to a home. And so flowers that you would do for the home are going to be different than what you might do to send to an office because maybe they want it to match their home. Maybe they want it to match their tablecloth. Maybe they want it just to be their favorite color. Maybe they want it to fit on their desk that they've set up because they're working from home. You know, there's so many different ways to think about it now. Um, there's not really a definite right or wrong answer for that. So I don't have the perfect answer for you. You know, I have to share with you guys one thing that I heard today that made me laugh when you said that you were expecting snow in Texas. I have um, a friend who does freelance work and so she'll go to work for different flower shops and Marisa, you know too, Lindy, yes. and she travels to various flower shops to do work. So uh, Christmas, she was back east, worked at a flower shop through the entire holiday season, then came back home and now she's working up north in northern Washington. And they you know, said, you know, beware, our, our temperatures are a little colder. You want to make sure you're prepared for the thing, fact that our temperatures are colder than normal. And so she said, that's not a problem. I can do that. Oops, this is not even in the water badly in. There we go. Um, so then they said, oh, and we might have some snow. And she's like, oh, not a problem. I got that. Well, they're up where they were under a tsunami watch because of the earthquake down in New Zealand and Australia area. So they were on a tsunami watch. It's like, what do you wear to a tsunami? I didn't pack for that. And I just had to giggle, which they didn't have a tsunami, so she's fine. But how funny is that? You try to be prepared for any situation when you're a freelance designer, but who would think to prepare for a tsunami? I thought that was pretty funny. Okay, let's see here. So shout out to Alexa, who is a recent FDI graduate who just got her business license and oh, named okay. her business, oh, Alexa Floral Design. Congratulations, Alexa Floral Design. That's pretty great. I am so happy for you. Are you crazy busy with Valentine's? What do you think? I'm going to stop on this one so that you can see the trio of how much do you love her? So they want one, two, or three, and using the fire colors. So it still has the red from the vessel, and the red from the roses, and it's ready to go. And if they really love her, you could do a six pack. I'm not going to make you watch six of them though, so we'll set these aside. Leanne, while you're putting those aside, 
Cindy, who is also a um, graduate of ours, she just landed a floral job, but it's on a trial basis. She wants to know if you have any advice for her. You know, during the holiday season, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, all of the holidays, it, people are so busy, they don't really have time to interview and hire and go through the whole training process. So rather than go through that stress, they just bring in temporary holiday help. And so think about your temporary position as an interview. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to see if you fit. So if you're the new person and you're there, make yourself so valuable they can't imagine not having you there. You need to be the one that's quick to get the broom, says, let me take care of that for you. Let me clear that away for you. And you get that out of the way. Because like, whoa, well, thank you. Or they're the ones that come along and say, oh, I think you forgot this vase. I'll put it right here so that you don't have to hunt for it later. How cool is that? Oh, could I wipe your brow? Maybe not quite so much. But just make yourself so valuable to them that they can't imagine that you wouldn't be there. Because that temp clientele, the temp help that they bring in, it is a test to see if you fit, if you mesh and if they want to keep you on a permanent basis. And if you don't match, and you'll know that, if you go, gosh, I hate it here, I don't match, then that's not your job. You wanna go ahead and step away and go get another, but now you have experience. You've got experience, you've done a Valentine's. So just treat it like a fancy pants interview, okay? So now another thing that we do in class is teaching the weaving of the nautilus. You've seen that before in class maybe, so students have made that. So I asked Marisa to make me up some nautilus because for Valentine's, they're pretty perfect because you have two nautilus and you have a heart. How cool is that? you have somebody that's a little more dramatic, somebody that is trying to figure out how they want to be valentine -y, giving them something a little bit different. So I'm looking to see how they match, deciding which one I like the best. And I think this one was pretty perfect. And I'm going to extend it. by just taping it on to a wood pick. Okay. So it's the same Nautilus that you've made in basic, not basic, in advanced floral design when we teach the foliage manipulation. If you haven't done advanced yet, you will learn this in advance. We can make sure that we include this because it is a popular one. So I'm just attaching that in there and then Putting that in as part of my heart. Then bringing in the second one. And this one's long enough I don't need it to be on a pick. So I can just put it in like so. See how they draw your eye in? They give you that movement. Frame the negative space. How perfect for the Valentine that wants to be a little different. I think this is just too much fun. Then I cut the extra ends that I don't really need here because they're in my way. There we go. The rest can stay. They won't really show. Then go back and add just a little bit of foliage. Start doing some green. What else is going on out there, Parker? Sorry to go backwards, but Vicki wanted to know what were those trio bases covered in? Yes, I have that same question over here. <laughs> I wondered if somebody was going to ask that. Okay. So the trio, it's just a standard clear glass vase, and then I wrapped it with sisal. So it's netting, sisal, like you would put in a gift basket or something. Mm -hmm. And then I covered that to lock it in place with bullion wire. So I've got red sisal around a clear vase, and then wrapped with bullion wire to lock it in. And it works really well. 
don't you think? And it's waterproof, so the color isn't going to bleed. That's something you want to check. You don't want to use something that the color could bleed and get all over the table. Oh, that wouldn't be good. Not good at all. Leanne, and I'm going to jump backwards as well. Um, Kim, who is a graduate of ours, has some um, advice for Cindy, who was asking about um, flower shop advice. Kim says to listen, enjoy, and remember your elements and principles. There we go. So, when you're your first time in a flower shop and you're scared to death because you haven't worked in a flower shop and you're the new kid and you're like, oh, where do I fit? Just relax. Take a breath. Enjoy it. And then think about your elements and your principles and your flower care. And remember to smile. Now granted, you may have a mask on, because that's the law in a lot of places, but you can still tell if somebody is smiling, because you see it in their eyes. So even though you may have a mask on, go ahead and smile. It means the world to someone when they're busy and crazy, and they're scared too, because they are bought so many flowers, and they're like, oh my gosh, what if we don't sell them all? What's gonna happen? And so the fact that you smile at them, makes them feel better. Got a few more questions over here, Leanne. Okay. This may be a question for our tribe out there, especially for the ones that have taken, taken both the online and classroom classes. Rhonda wants to know if it's harder to get certified online than in the classroom. Well, I have my opinion. I'll save that, so Parker and Marisa remind me that we have to answer that before the end. But let's throw it out to the tribe. Do some of, you know, a lot of you do basic floral design from home, because that's the longer program, and then you come to Portland for the advanced floral design course, because that's the shorter one. So do you find that it was easier to work on your studies when you were at home or when you're in the classroom? So that's an excellent question for you. So asking the tribe, what's your opinion? Marisa. And then Juana wants to know, so she received um, a shipment of roses today instead of tomorrow. Do you think they'll still be okay for delivery on Saturday? As long as you keep them in your flower cooler, they should be fine. Um, key is temperature. And I was thinking about that a lot of people here in the Pacific Northwest, since our winters are mild, just plan on leaving things out and that they'll be okay, but now they can't because they would freeze. And so that's a little tricky. You really want it to be 34 to 36 degrees is the best. And as long as you keep them cold like that, they'll be totally fine. If you bring them out at room temperature, get those puppies sold. See if you can deliver them early. Spread the love on Wednesday. Spread the love on Thursday. Spread the love on Friday. Let them have the whole week of Valentine's and they should be okay. And then Ike, um, again, this, so many questions for the tribe. Um, Ike wants to know um, what are the best filler flowers for Valentine's Day? Good question. So what are you guys using as fillers out there? And I can answer that one after the tribe as well. I'll kind of share my thoughts on that. But that's a tribe question. So which fillers are you using this Valentine's Day? I see two on the set that are perfect, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> I would have to agree. Uh, Leanne, Arthur wants to know if billy balls come in different colors. Billy balls, they are starting to sell them as dyed materials. So naturally, whoop, I used them all. Naturally, they only come in yellow. That's the natural color. But they're now starting to do dyed where you can get them in orange. And then they are gilding them with gold, silver, copper, getting different colors. So naturally, only yellow. Reality, anything goes these days. You know how that is. So I'm bringing in some little mini callas, enhancing this particular arrangement. I might have to take that one again. Is that one fun? Yeah. yeah, I love it. <laughs> you know, it doesn't take a lot of flowers when you have wonderful things to work with. You can just sort of 
tuck them in and have them be great. Having the foliage is important. Then maybe doing some spray roses in here just to finish off the focal emphasis. Some flower school words there. If you've already joined us, you know these words. If you haven't, then these are words you'll start using when you're with us. It's focal emphasis and line and rhythm. So I'm just tucking these down low. The added bonus of using them low like this is they're close to the water reservoir. So the whole arrangement is going to last really, really well. It's going to be a long live design simply because they're close to the water source. So that makes the customer happy because flowers last so well. Makes you happy because your customer's happy. And it uses up shorter flowers too, which is kind of convenient. In regards to filler flower, uh, Selma and Julia said they really like wax flower. And Janet said hypericum is fun. I'm getting those same answers over here too. Hypericum and wax? I yep. love it. Well, I've got some wax here, and I was thinking how perfect would that be with this particular arrangement. And yes, I think wax is great for a filler flower for the holiday. It's long lasting, has a nice aroma to it. And look how much it adds with the texture. A little bit of contrast to this. Now, the Misty that I used in the first arrangement is a more traditional filler, and that would work as well. But the wax flower really kind of gives you a more contemporary look, something that's maybe not expected. And it does definitely jazz it up, gives my design a little bit of movement. Leanne? Yeah? We have someone asking what that Nautilus shell uh, looks like before it has been braided and what kind of palm it is. Great. Okay, so here is the palm that we use to create the Nautilus. And if you've braided hair and such, you're really good at it. If you haven't, then you've got to work with it a little more, but it's basically weave it back and forth, bringing it in, and just keep winding back and forth until you get it all woven together and then you lash it at the bottom. We're going to teach that in school. We're not going to teach it here today. But um, it is the palm that has been woven into a nautilus, little bit of wax flower, and I made the design two-sided. I didn't want it to look like it had to have a front and a back because if they're doing this at home for the holiday, Chances are they might set it on a kitchen counter where they can see it from both sides or a coffee table where it would be seen from both sides. So you want to make sure that you think about how it'll be viewed so that it looks beautiful no matter which direction. And then the subtle heart just makes it extra special. What do you think? Do you like that one? We should have a vote as to which is the most favorite today. So. Do you like the Nautilus, which is from the advanced class, or the Nest, which was from an advanced class, or the Trio, which was just from my shelf, so we've got something there. What else is going on? Let's see here. What else is going on? Um, there's so many. I have, oh, here's another one for a pillow flower, although... Yeah, these could be used as filler flowers. The red, uh, bright pink Matsumoto asters. Ooh, I don't think of those as fillers, but they would work, definitely. Matsumoto asters would give you a pop of color that would be pretty grand. That would be very nice. I and, like that. And then I did just type this in for everybody, but I wanted to make sure that everyone knows that that palm to make the Nautilus shell, the best variety of palm is Arica. Arica use. palm, okay, there you go. So, Arica palm is the variety you want because you want it to have long enough tendrils and then also to be soft enough to weave. So, um, if you get the wrong kind, it doesn't weave well. Now, some of our students that are studying online and wanting to practice that, I understand they've had a little bit of difficulty sometimes finding the palm. And what has worked is going to a plant store 
and buying a palm plant. And then you just cut off a few fronds and then you've got the perfect weaving. So if that's something that you find challenging, not being able to find it, that's one solution. We learn so much from our students as to how they source their materials and how they gather them. So I thought I would do a hand tie now. So we've done one in foam, one in water. Now I'm gathering and I just wanted to do more classic valentine, so pink and red. So I've got some variegated carnations, spray roses, and I'm just cleaning them off so that when I go to make it, it all works together. And then I've got some regular pink carnations and some regular red carnations. Man, I'm so excited to see this from Vega because she said if it's okay to travel in October, she's going to come here and to take advance. Oh, that'd be great. Vega will be waiting for you because that would be so grand. You'll have so much fun. Um, when we do the in-person in classes, we'll be limiting to nine because that's the spacing that allows us maximum safety. So then it's just a matter of you being able to safely get here. And hopefully by next summer, we can all start being vaccinated and prepared to be out and about and doing things again. It's been so long since we've been able to do things that we need to be able to travel. I was thinking about that because we, um, last year, last year, just before, just before the lockdown, we had our employee holiday party. We always have it in late January, February, somewhere in there, so that we cannot try to get together during the holidays because everybody's too busy then. There's so much going on. And so last year, our party was just before the lockdown, like one week before the lockdown. So we were so lucky. And I thought, oh, this will be over by next year, don't you think? And it wasn't. We just scheduled our holiday party and we're doing it virtually. We're not going to be able to gather in person yet. And that just kind of broke my heart. But I know the time will come that we get to gather together again. And we'll all be traveling and we'll all be able to give a hug and see each other. Probably be different than it's ever been because we'll all be a little bit nervous. But it will come back. It definitely will. So I took some Italian ruscus and I just wove it together to get a nice little nest to begin. And then I laid out some flowers. I got some salal. thought that could be pretty in here. And just kind of laying things around so I'm ready. Then if you saw on Instagram the little story that was put up today, Marisa did a story. You saw that we woof you. It was pretty cute. If you didn't see it, you missed out because it was adorable. So if you go to Instagram, find us, Flower School, follow us. Make sure you follow so that you get all the updates. That way you'll always know if you woof us. But she had the cutest things ever. What do you think? Are those too cute for Valentine's? <laughs> I woof you! Anyway, so she said, Leanne, you've got to have this. This is perfect for Valentine's. And I thought, you are so right. Those are incredible. Absolutely amazing. Now, let me tell you, it's a little harder than it looks. So when you're making those, it takes six carnations. You want to have nice, beautiful carnations, okay? And then you start with two. Those are going to be the ears. So those are going to come up towards the top. Okay. And then you add one. It's nice. See how I'm layering it underneath? So that's the face, okay? So now I have one that's the face. Then, 
again, layering to make like the cheeks. Okay. So you've got ears, face for the eyeballs, cheeks, and then last you want one really wonderful fluffy one that ends up being the snout, comes out a little longer. And then you lash this all together. You can use a wire, you could use a bit of twine. But you secure that. Everyone is just dead silent too over here and there's no comments. I think they're all just watching. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Then once you have it together, that's when you go back and you add the eyeballs and a nose and a little tiny bow, just a tiny, tiny one tucked in. The eyeballs, we use black bullion wire. Just pull off some bullion wire. <laughs> Wad it up. Chris is memorized, and Caledonia says she wants so many of these. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be telling you, Marisa's better at it than I am. I need a little more practice. But you can have then just a little eyeball. You can see, I don't want it against my jacket because you won't be able to see it, but that way you can see it. And that then tucks in. You need your second one. And then for the nose, we had little Valentine feather things that were left over. And so how cute is that? Just put a nose right in. Oh, adorable. Or a little bit of bullion wire. Or you could do a button palm. There's one with the heart on it. So you can see they make too cute for Valentine's. So I thought these will be part of my hand tie. I thought, how perfect is that? So it's six carnations, and you do have to practice a little bit. I'll be honest with you. Here's my first practice one, not nearly as cute as Marisa's. Marisa's were cuter. But <laughs> see? It's pretty cute. Oh, no, it's pretty cute. It turned out okay <laughs> after you fixed it. I had the eyeballs in the wrong spot. I didn't know where to put the eyeballs, and they looked pretty dorky, I will tell you. My eyeballs were in the ears, so it was like, oh my gosh, I forgot I had ears. Um, and so you'll want to practice in the privacy of your own back room <laughs> till you get it right so you don't embarrass yourself. But then, if you really keep practicing, you'll be as good as Marisa. And how cool is that? I just think it's too fun. So she was right. We did need to have this today because this is just too, too perfect. So I've got my foliage. And then I could put a few flowers in to start. And I'm just weaving them into my hand, okay. and then coming in one of the puppies, okay. <laughs> and then the other, so that you've got them in there, and then going back and adding in a few more flowers. Well, Foxy sure approves. I know. I hear Foxy out there. Foxy's barking. We must be getting a delivery. And so Foxy is alerting us that there's an intruder alert. Intruder alert. Give me a little bit of rose here. You can see I'm grouping some things. Let me bring it over here. Remembering that I want to keep it all sided. I don't want it to be flat. And then as I work, I just start spiraling it. Once I've got things started, I can go back, finish filling in. We have Scott 
had a question earlier. Um, the last couple of lives that you've done, you've used bunny tails. Are those canary grass? I don't know. Somebody Google it. Are bunny tails canary grass? Are they the same thing? I really don't know. You got me on that one, Scott. Mara's been popping in with a lot of good wrecks on these uh, these little dogs we're making. You using hypericum berries for the nose? Oh, hypericum berries would be so cute. They could be eyeballs or nose. They might be a little too small for the nose. They'd be perfect for the eyeballs. You're so right. You could do so many fun things. So many fun things. And the only thing that stops you is your time and creativity and a little bit of practice to make sure that they don't end up looking cockeyed like mine did the first time. <laughs> that was, mine looked like they were just kind of cross-eyed, I guess, not cockeyed, they were cross-eyed. I had cross-eyed dogs, they just didn't quite work. They just weren't even on the right part of the body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Epic fail. <laughs> So Leanne, if you had to name this bouquet, what would you name it? Puppy Love. Yeah. Oh, Puppy Love. Too cute, too fun. Oh, it looks like Canary Grass is. Scott Googled it and said, uh, yes, it is. Okay. So now you know. If Leanne doesn't know, Google is your source. <laughs> Actually, if Leanne doesn't know, the tribe will know. And that's where I always go. So I go to the tribe and I say, okay, people, does somebody know this answer? And invariably, somebody does and can help me out. Leanne, I can totally I make a suggestion it. for that? You can may. Can you tuck in a little bit of wax flour right under the pink dog? Do we need wax flour yeah. right there? Yeah, so just, just for a little bit of contrast and to bring more of the white in. And then it'll be picture perfect. And we must have it be picture perfect. Sort of like that? Yeah. A little bit more to the left. Yeah. So as you're putting in the filler flower, the wax flower, so what do you consider the best filler flowers for Valentine's Day? You know, my favorite fillers for Valentine's are heather mm -hmm. and wax flower. I really like that hot pink of the heather mixed in with things. And then I love that wax flower to add texture and softness. So those would be my two, would be heather and wax flower. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Okay, and let's not forget, because we had to remind you on this one, remember the question earlier yeah. about, is it harder to get certified online? Yes. In person. So, what did the tribe come up with? Certified online or in person? Did we get any answers there? I we, did, yeah. Okay. I had Mar and Vicky chime in and say they really like doing it online because then those resources are available to them whenever they need them. And then over here, I had a few great answers. Um, someone said because of um, the online course, at, or excuse me, coming to the classroom, um, it's more of a... Uh, the process is sped up more, and life doesn't get in the way. Um, and a lot of other people had said it just really depends on your how you learn. Those are all great answers. So whether it's better in person or online would depend on your learning style and also your ability to take time out from your life. What I find is that online students actually do better than classroom students at learning how to adapt. Because you have to figure out your own substitutions based on availability and seasonality. So you have a stronger grasp of what it means to be a professional florist and having to adapt to make things work. The classroom benefit is that you get that immediate response from a teacher of, why don't you try moving it right here? And that just helps so much because sometimes you just need that little voice saying, try moving it to the left, and you go, oh, you're right. If I move it to the left, it's absolutely perfect. And so there really are benefits to each. And so oftentimes I tell people, if you can, do the basic online and then do the advanced in the classroom. 
Now, one thing I'm finding, I've had some people, and this is kind of an interesting take, is they actually do both. They do the classroom program and come in so that they can have that one-on-one -on -one time with a teacher and really, really, really hone those skills and get used to it. And then they go back and they buy the advanced course online so that they have that resource bank at their disposal as a reference to go back to over and over and over again. And that does make a lot of sense. Um, they never do the assignments online. They're just using it as a resource tool to make sure that they get it all figured out. So now, I think I'm going to cut this down a bit. It's so cute, man. I can't. Did it turn out cute? It's yes. so cute. And I don't think um, there's enough time to put this one on the tally of which arrangement everyone liked the best, but hands down, Leanne, guess which one they picked out of the three. Which? You this guess. one? You guess. Well, no, that one doesn't count because it, wasn't, it oh. wasn't done yet, but which one do you think they liked the best? The nest? They actually liked the Nautilus. The Nautilus. That was like hands down. Same here. I'm the same on YouTube. Okay, so... I'm going to set this here. I'm going to need to cut it down a little for more. I'm not there. So we'll be leaving here in about one minute, but you'll have time. I do want you, now that you've seen all of them, okay. so you've got that, you've got this. And I'm not going to put the trio up here because those were just a simple thing. So of the three, go ahead and vote again. Even if you voted already, go ahead and is it the nest, the nautilus, or the puppy love? Which is your favorite? Just so we know. Plus it's fun to see what you think because that helps us plan out future lives as to what types of things we share and show. And then in the meantime now, Time for you to make some Valentine love out there. Spread the love, spread the joy. Thanks for joining me. Next week, we'll be doing wedding during our live. Teacher Carolyn will be here and sharing some fun tidbits on wedding. And next week, we also have our wedding trends and technique class on Thursday, Friday. So if you're working crazy busy and making money, Maybe it's time to come to flower school and join us for the wedding trends and techniques. Don't forget, price change goes up March 1st. In the meantime, which is your fave? I'll see you all next week. Get out there and do something you love. Bye for now.